Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to the DME for Peace community, wherever you are in the world. Have you missed us? Uh, welcome to this week's edition of the m and &E Thursday Talks. Uh, we're really excited to be back uh, to kick off 2019 with you all. Um, the m and &E Thursday Talks on DME for Peace are made possible with the support of the Carnegie Corporation of New York through the Peacebuilding Evaluation Consortium. Just in case you've forgotten, because it's been a bit of a break, my name is Jack Farrell, and I am the DME for Peace Project Manager at Search for Common Ground in a very wintry and cold Washington, DC. Now, to start off 2019, I couldn't think of two better hosts than my Search for Common Ground colleagues, Carlotta Faciotti and Emmanuel Nkuzi uh, of Search for Common Ground uh, in Rwanda uh, to kick off our webinar series for 2019. Uh, they're going to lead a discussion on innovative methods for conducting research with children aged six and below. Just a note, uh, if you have a question during the webinar, you can write it on the question function or on your GoToWebinar dashboard, and we will address it once we reach that section of the presentation. I am now gonna hand over to our guests, Carlotta and Emma, you're very welcome, and the floor is all yours. Thank you very much, Doc. Uh, Carlotta has a problem. Let me start uh, on the on the presentation overview of this presentation. So during this presentation, we are going to see the innovative methodology. I have the assessment with children of six years and below. So we discuss the approach and the methodology that we used in this assessment. We will look what worked well and which were the which were the mistakes happened while we were just conducting this assessment. How did we adjust it to make sure that everything is going well? Uh, the lessons learned, as well as the applicability for some other institutions or other countries who need just to apply to uh, to implement the similar assessment. So the assessment, uh, the approach of this assessment has two objectives: is that to reflect on resonance uh, of the radio messaging to see if the the listeners understood uh, and connected with the messages just yes, broadcasting the, the radio program. We broadcast the national radio program, and they want just to see if the, the listeners capture and they understand the message. Also, we want to, uh, to identify the risk, the risk the, identify the responses of parents and the children as the audience of this program to see if there is a behavior change uh, and understand if there is any change as a result of the show. Uh, yeah, this program uh, targeted the parents and the children of six years and below. The challenge, how do we collect data with young child? Sometimes we, which, which can barely speak or focus for long hours. Uh, during this assessment, the data collection uh, follow were collected by two types of, uh, by both parents and the children. To collect the data with children, search for common ground in Rwanda, develop the games uh, and observation checklist based on age gaps of the children, just or on the capacity and the challenges of the children. This was observed during the pretest of material before starting the real data collection. Also, the data collection worked on the uh, on parents who used the focus group discussion with parents exposed to the program as a key informant uh, with uh, parents non exposed to the program to see if there is any change or a behavior change after uh, a certain period of being exposed to the program. The research uh, followed the five steps. They informed the consent as blackers, broadcasting games or listening games, episode broadcast, as well as post the game so inform the concept, we develop the concept form, and then we send to the parents before starting the data collection for the parents to sign and they give permission to the children and they, uh, uh, to participate in the assessment. So this has this form the consent before starting the data collection. We explain it as well to the children. After explaining to the children, ask them if they are happy, if they can just uh, continue to play with us as this is a game play. And then for those who accepted the
Okay, Emma appears we may have some microphone issues on your end. Um, if you could repeat what you said um, for the last 30 seconds, that would be fantastic. Uh, on data collection? No, we are on the next slide. Okay, so I was saying that uh, there is such a process just for the five, five steps. They inform the consent, the ice breakers, uh, broadcast the game, just listening to the episode before being exposed to the program, uh, episode of broadcasting, listening to the episode, as well as playing the game, repeating the same game that we did before they listen to the program. In the informed consent, we, we develop the informed consent and then we share with the parents before starting the data collection to make sure that the parents give right and the permission to their children to participate on our assessment. So the, before also starting the real data collection, we read and explain to the, the purpose and the, how we use the data to the children and the happy or not just to play with. with them as well as starting with KIA with the, with the parents. For the parents who accepted or those who don't want to participate, they say, they raise their hand, they say, I know to participate, but uh, as good news, every pa all parents just accept just to participate. For the icebreakers was just to make, um, to build trust uh, between uh, the team and the children, so that the children can participate at easy, uh, so that the team and the facilitator will be able just to, to get some response from children. It was just making a big team building and the relationship between children and the, the team facilitator and the observers. Uh, before before they, we we play the game, we we play the we we play the game before being exposed to see if there is any basic knowledge of the games uh, among the five episodes selected. And uh, those games that we, we played with them, are, as well as asking the questions and take notes to see if there is any basic knowledge they have before being exposed. Automatically, after, after the, 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 the pretest, we, we, we broadcast or listen, we play the episode. And the children, they listen. After listening, we ask them some, we had the focus group discussion with children and ask them some, some questions to see if there is anything they, hear, they heard in the episode or uh, as a result to what we play. After, the, after listening to the episode, we repeat the same episode, like the one we played before, as a post-test to see if there is any change as a result of the show, as a result of listening to the program. This is a poll for the casting care. Search for Common Ground developed the five games, uh, uh, which is in line with five episodes selected. So those five episodes select game developed there. Daddy loves me, body hygiene, body parts, boys and girls can do the same thing, and solving conflicts. Among those games, I'm going to have to explain one of the that games, boy and the girl can do some things. We played with children of three to four years. This game was just to understand perspectives on gender and the, and the what and the see what boys and girls think can do the same thing. So we this is what the target of this game. So to play this game, for those who, need, who can just apply this game, this game requires one hour. And uh, we have to have a free basket, as you see, like uh, the, on the on the pictures. So those pictures it's showing that, like uh, uh, have pictures of boys, picture of boys and girls, picture of ladies, of uh, boys, and girls, and the boys and girls combined. And then we explain the the what the the basket is and what they really use, and the and the make facilitator have to make sure that all children understood the purpose and the meaning of the basket. After making sure that should all should be understood the baskets and then they explain the, the, the activities. For example, here we have a policeman and uh, we make sure also all should have paper boards to, to decide and score in a 
in the basket. So for us, we have three, eight children. So each child is supposed to have a paper ball made before, and then while asking the deciding, this activity can be done by boy, can be done by girl, or then. Now, Emma, we've had a, another issue with your audio. Um, if you could just repeat, um, I think you were just about to move on to this slide. For oh, for this slide, the boys and the girl. Yeah, you were just the finishing up. Them. You were just finishing up on that side. Yes. Okay, so I was saying like, uh, uh, facilitate have to make sure that the children understood the the baskets. And uh, also have to make sure that the children understood the pictures, the pictures of the activity. For example, here we were just, we showed them the picture and we asked them, what did you see on this picture? If they know, so they raise and they say, if they don't know, we have to make sure that every child understood that this activity, for example, this picture showing a, a policeman. So after knowing, after, after all, all children understood what the activity means on the picture as well. So they have the paper ball in their hands. So they decide and they go to score in the basket to see if they think that the activity is, is that it can be done by boy, if they think that the activity can be done by girl, if they think also it can be done by both. Boy. Uh, so during this assessment, we had a team of three persons because of the complexity of the game. Based on the complexity of the game, as, the, as well as the facilitator, to make sure the facilitator can facilitate and the observer capture something, the team was made with two enumerators to help each other make sure that nothing is missing and they can, they can translate and they make only the, the score so that they can capture everything. The far data collector reader support the facilitator to make sure that the children, children they are feeling at ease, they are, they are together so the facilitator they can just be able to facilitate and they finish the game well. The, the, data, the data collection to collect the data, we develop the grid of the data entry because the children were scoring. You're supposed to know if they say that this is a, what the child decided that this activity done by a boy. So we made a degree of data entry where we, we take note for everything that we observe during the game. For, to take note in during focus group discussion with parents, KIA. And we lost you again, Emma. Uh, once. Emma, if you could go back to the, uh, you were just mentioning about the focus group discussion for the parents. Uh huh. Okay, for focus group discussion of parents, uh, we focus group discussion of parents as well as key informative interview of parents and exposed to the program. Focus group discussion of parents was the parents exposed to the program before or whose children also were, have, had been exposed to the program. We took notes, every kind of information they gave us. So we make sure that we have information regarding something we didn't observe in the class while playing with the children, as well as a way of getting behavior and the attitude change. To analyze the qualitative and the quantitative data, so those qualitative data, we sit together as a team, and uh, we sit together as a team, and we translate as well as uh, we, we validate the data before, start, we, before using the, in the reports. Quantitative data also of those uh, quantitative. And Emma, uh, we're having another audio issue. Thank you to our audience for your patience, uh, as Emma is based in Kigali, sometimes the internet drops in and out. Um, yeah. Carlotta, oh, Emma, you're back. Yeah. Or Carlotta, maybe you can um, elaborate. Carlotta oh. Carlot is back? Yes, you're both here. Yeah. Okay, so we can. 
All right. Okay. So maybe just to wrap up um, on what Emma was saying, um, and please bear me, with me for the internet connection with us, in fact. Uh, but yeah, there were two different levels of that analysis. Obviously, the qualitative uh, coming from the observations of um, the game with the children, uh, as well as the, the different notes of the two data collectors. And then there was the quantitative, and the quantitative was mostly around um, the children reactions to the different games that we noted down like for instance the game that m explained uh how many um boys and how many girls that um a, bo a boy can be a pilot or only a girl can be a pilot or both boys and girls can be a pilot um so we did this um double level of analysis and then we triangulated those um, as well as having brainstorming sessions. Uh, and this was due to the specificity of the type of data collected. We needed to have these sessions where we also brainstorm about the different observations and try to triangulate uh, of what different people observed and then completing it with the quantitative and qualitative data analysis. Um, just to be very brief on the report, the report uh, informed on both the relevance of the ETT radio program that UNICEF uh, requested us to assess and see if there was any changes at the level of the children, as well as the resonance and the response uh, that both children and parents had um, based on the message that were delivered through the through these radio episodes. Um, in terms of what worked, um, this sounds a little bit of um, something uh, pretty straightforward, but digital engagement, uh, it's paramount, and um, their interest in the research was fundamental to encourage children participation. We're talking about children six and below, so some of them barely talk, some of them barely walk, so as you can see, there are a lot of challenges in terms of, um, first of all, making them participate into the game, but also making sure that um, they are attentive all along the um, all along the game and also that they want to participate in the game. So having the parents on your side in this case is, is very important because a kids are crying and then the parents can help you to calm him down or um, bring him back to the, the floor to play the game this is a fundamental um something also that we understood it was working well uh it was the fact that we had three people in the data collection team and this is also due to the uh, nature of the data that were collected given that it's observation it was important for us to have at least two different observations happening at the same time in order to triangulate data uh probably three um, or four uh, observer would have been even better, but you also have to consider sensitive uh, to the context and also you don't want to overwhelm the children with too many people uh, standing around them. Um, and then it was fundamental to separate children by age categories um, because what we found out is that children of three years and four, four years old can be put together in the same group because they, their level of development and understanding of the game is pretty similar. But already with children five and six, we at the beginning we thought about putting them together as well as a second age group, but then we decided to split them down because the demand that a child of six years old is not the same as a five years old. And we uh, noticed during the pretest that uh, they were reacting completely different and there was a big gap, both in boys and girls. Um, and then the pre and post exposure uh, games was actually like a very good method for us to see if um, the episode uh, played had any effect on the kids. Um, and, and yeah, and also like understanding if they, the, the children were getting uh, the message broadcasted. Um, concerning the mistakes, um, did not disaggregate the groups by sex, uh, and that was mostly coming from a donor request. Um, but we noticed some outstanding difference, differences between boys and girls. Uh, 
so what we learn is that if you really want to grasp these uh, gender differences, then uh, differentiating them by sex is um, is very important. And also, um, some of the initial the initial games that we develop uh, and and the data collection schedule was too long. Uh, children have span of attention that it's very limited, get bored very quickly, um, they get tired, some of them, when we were pre-testing, some of them fell asleep, some of them started crying because they were hungry. So you really need to like understand that the data, the games that you wanna play and the data collection schedule cannot be too long. Um, there's also like the risk of bias in children responses because they tend to copy each other. Um, so it's very important to make sure that the facilitator is well trained on both the game and on addressing this uh, bias. Um, for instance, something that we discovered that was um, that was a big bias and it was affecting the way children reacted was were doing um, an, an action, right? So if we were asking children to put um, the paper ball in a basket and then you clap hands, then they automatically understand to in motivate them, right? It was very like, um, it wasn't intent to say like you're right or wrong, but more to motivate them. But then that's how the children understood. They thought that when you were clapping hands, they were doing something right. And so then everyone started doing the same thing. So you have to be careful on like these like small uh, bias that you can have. And, um, and then again, I mean, uh, children uh, might refuse to play or start crying, and so it's their own right to just like leave the game if they feel like. So this happens also a lot, um, and you have to take it into account. Uh, so how did we adjust? Um, we first of all we practice the game uh, multiple times before the actual data collection, and we also made sure that the facilitators were very much aware of the game, understood the games. And um, and yeah, and was ready to play to facilitate those. And we also had training sessions in Kigali before going to the district with the different facilitators. Uh, we made sure because of what I said before, we made sure to call more than the initial number of children selected because um, children just refuse to play the game. And uh, so you want to make sure that you have enough number of children. Uh, and then we made sure that we measured the time needed to perform the whole game circle. Um, and we shortened the, the schedule, the game schedule. So for instance, we removed the afternoon uh, data collection and we also made sure that every, we developed, we adapted each game to the different age gaps. At the beginning, we had one game for all age and then we understood that that was not working. And so we had to adapt the different games to the, to the age gaps. Um, now, what we learn is like um, what, um, what I already said to plan enough time to work with children and accounting for a slower pace of children. We also realize that songs and music are very effective in drawing children's attention. So once you develop the game, uh, if you want to develop this approach, make sure that there is something catchy for the children that they can bear in mind. So music are very effective for that. Um, and then again, you want to make sure that there are at least two people doing observation. Three is probably best. But then again, you don't want to have too many people uh, for the sensitivity issue that I explained before. And then um, the exposure time, the episodes, the radio episodes that we expose children with, uh, they were very long. So it makes very difficult for the children to recall the message during 10 minutes uh, broadcast. So maybe if you want to play that, uh, if you want to do something similar, make sure that during the exposure time, um, there are like short messages and um, and yeah, and the exposure time is shorter. Um, and then something else that we also uh, um, learn is to avoid the why and how questions when you do the follow up uh, after the game, because for children of this age, it's hard to, um, um, so close questions probably work better. Um, and then, yeah, children distract very easily and lose focus. So you want to account for that. And, and also what we learn is like, as I said, uh, the role of parents and facilitator is uh, crucial. Uh, so if parents can be present during the games, even better. 
because uh, they can help you address some of the issues that you might face with, uh, uh, you know, children losing focus or children starting crying or other issues. And also for, you know, sensitivity issues of uh, working with like children of this age and as well as the role of the facilitator. So the facilitator needs to be trained extensively on uh, the game, the process, the schedule, and needs to be familiar with the children as well. So you wanna pick facilitators that children know or are familiar with. Um, in terms of applicability, and then we leave the floor for questions, uh, is that uh, that was our first um, uh, attempt to do this kind of research uh, with children of such a younger age gap. So uh, it needs further testing. Um, and the interest will be to try to test in, in our building settings um, where, um, but then we also um, want to see if in other building tests there are extra layer of sensitivity uh, that you might need to add, such as like exposure of the children to trauma. Um, and then also the games needs to be adapted. So if you want to uh, use this approach, uh, don't just like copy and paste the games. Uh, we're happy to share the games that we use. And we have like full cards with description of different games, but make sure that the games are adapted to the context and like make sense with what you are assessing and the type of change that you want to understand. Uh, and then again, um, make sure that the facilitators are trained on the games. And I insist on that because we really understood that that was a big uh, lesson learned from us and as well as the data collection timeline. Um, and then pre and post test, uh, if you uh, intend to use this uh, method, should be organized um, well before and few time after the um, the exposure, right? So maybe you want to allow more time between these two um, as changes takes time. So to really understand the change, probably a better approach will be to have a pregame and then I suppose during the, the following week to the message and then doing the post game the week after. Uh, cause you, because if you really want to be able to measure changes over time, then you need to like allow for this uh, time span between the pre and post exposure. But we didn't have time in our uh, context, but yeah, that's definitely something that I would suggest if you want to uh, use this approach. And that would be it. So maybe we leave the floor from questions. I don't know if my colleague Emma wants to add something. I think, like, uh, I think you have done the let's wait for questions and the clarification. Yeah. Great. Right. Emma, Thanks. Carlotta, thank you very much. And thank you for persisting through any tech issues. Uh, we have uh, a ton of these in DC, so I really uh, appreciate you working through the frustration. Um, to our audience, thank you for your patience. We're now going to open up uh, today's presentation for questions. A couple of notes about our format for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Thursday Talks. You can submit a question in two ways. The first is through the question function on GoToWebinar. That will allow you to type your question. The second is to click on the little hand icon, which will raise your hand and allow us to unmute your microphone so you can ask your question live. When you do submit your question, we ask that you submit your name and affiliation. Just a note, these talks are recorded and posted on DME for Peace. So those who are not able to join us at this time can go back and listen to the presentation and learn from our wider discussion. Now, there are a ton of questions flying in, guys. Um, so I think we should just get started. But I'm going to use my moderator's privilege here um, to, to get us underway. And I want to understand a little bit more about the design process. Who developed these games um, in the initial uh, sort of program? Um, were, they, were the uh, sort of monitoring and evaluation staff engaged from the get-go? Um, or were there thematic experts engaged? Right, thanks for the question. Maybe I can take uh, this one. Um, how many people and the, the Rwandan team were very much involved uh, in developing these games? Um, there was an extensive desk review that was done, uh, tried to learn from uh, what was uh, done before, but um, we didn't really find quite uh, extensive uh, uh, 
assessment uh, done in this sense. So um, it came involved in the get go and then the Okay, unfortunately, Carlotta, we have uh, lost your microphone. I think there were some gargoyles on the line. Um, Emma, I don't know if you have any. I'm thinking he's back. He's back. No, I, I, I think, I think we've got uh, some. Uh... No, Emma. Okay. If you just want to go ahead and try, try and maybe answer that about the design process. Yeah, our design process. Uh, everyone was involved in the in this process. Uh, we sit together and uh, Carla. Carla, she, she's gone again. Okay. So, uh, DMNA here in such Rwanda, everyone was involved. Even technical team was involved. Because it was as well as the facilitator, even just we developed the game based on the context. But we before because we to make sure that the, the question that we develop work, we just we call the the persons who are familiar with children. Those are the facilitators, and they will sit together and then we review. We, we did the first pre and the pre pre test to see if the the what we designed is worked. So everyone contributed a lot, and uh, we also we we approached the expert of UNICEF to see if uh, the standard of the question we are asking the children is in line on the level of the children. So did I respond to the question, Jack? Yeah. Yeah, could you hear me? Yes, Emma. We're we're back up back up and running. Um so our next question comes from Robert Thar, Emma, and Robert asks, what was the language that was used? Was it only in English and was this the first language of the children participating? Uh we we used the our native language, which is in Rwanda, because most of them are and we have lost you, Emma. Oh, okay. So I, yeah. I, I let's go. Let's go back. I, I yes. say so. We developed the game in English. But when we got we, we got to collect the data, we first translate in Kinyarwanda, our native language, to so make sure that children understood. Most of the children of three to four and three, up to six years, they don't know English. So even the parents, their level of understanding, their level, level of education, they are very low. So we translated in Kinyarwanda, we use the Kinyarwanda. That's what I can say. Language we use Kinyarwanda. Great. Thank you, Emma. One of the common themes which has uh, come up in this presentation, uh, or uh, come up in the questions uh, following the presentation, is the idea of bias. And one of the things I loved about your presentation is that you um, embrace the failure and you use those lessons to iterate and develop a better program. But I guess one of the questions that keeps coming up is, uh, how would you try to negate the effect of bias? If you were to do this program again, um, children being influenced by the actions of others uh, is completely natural. Um, and is there a way of doing this more effectively? Uh, this one is very hard. It's very complicated. <laughs> Maybe I'm, I, I can help you there. Um, I think uh, so. One of the the key lessons learned to reduce bias is what uh, what we explain in the sense of like trying to space out um, the pre and post exposure uh, because uh, memory is memory span is of children of that age is short. So even if you bias in the pre, at least you can try to avoid it in the post. 
instead of like doing it the same day, for instance. And then learning while you go, right? So the example that I did of the facilitator clapping hands, we understood that that would create bias. And so uh, then we avoid that in the other games that we played with the other um, children of other age gaps on in other districts. Um, so I think key is also to try to track uh, this bias as you see them and, and then try to adjust for the next uh, games. Great, thank you guys. The next question comes from Rohini Iyer uh, from India. And Rohini writes, could you point to certain variables that were considered for a data collection and further analyzed? On what data analysis techniques did you use to analyze the collected data? Emma, you want to take this one since you were involved in the data analysis? Uh, okay, so if I had weather questions, yes, the key variables that we looked on, we, we first of all, uh, we as we take in data as based on age gaps, the data were just disaggregated by age, we disaggregated by age. If, uh, there is, uh, we look on the uh, resonance and the responses, and uh, uh, also, we we try to see if there is uh, any attitude change, like uh, the children who who shows uh, like feelings of not continuing, who are very happy. Those kind of variables we look at the behavior and the attitude change while just analyzing these data to also to uh, respond to the objectives of the this assessment, which was the resonance and the responses. So if uh, I can touch where Kaleta can compliment me for. Yeah, that's, uh, that seems pretty definitely. And just to complete what Emmanuel was saying. Go right ahead, Carlotta. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, so there were uh, obviously like pre-established variables that we were looking at, and these were also agreed with, with UNICEF. Um, that we, so changes that we wanted to see in the way uh, children respond to the game. Uh, as well as new variables that came in through the observation. So there were some farthers that were added on the way, but yeah, definitely. So for instance, the one that like uh, Emma mentioned, definitely um, the number of people who responded, um, boys can, can, do, can do things, only boys can do some activities and then the number of children that responded, only girls or boys and girls and see if there's any change from the pre to the post exposure and then other other trends that came uh, out during the observations. Great, thank you very much, Carlotta. Our next question comes from Rebecca Beer, and Rebecca writes, could you tell us more about parent consent? Were the parents always present to give consent? Did you ever use written forms or verbal consent by phone? Or were there ever circumstances that the child's teacher give consent? For the parents, for the parents' consent form, we use the verbal because they are mature. It was no need just for them just to sign. So we just explain the purpose and then we how we use the data is we ask them permission to take pictures. And also this is, was just to, for programmatic purposes. So for them, they allow, they say yes, or, or they allow without just signing anywhere because they are mature. For, for children, yes, it was just to explain because it was a game play activity. If the children uh, want to play, even if they are their parents already allow them to participate, but the children are on their side, they are supposed to be feeling at ease so they can just start. That, that shows also that they give you, go ahead to work with them. Great, thank you, Emma. Um, our next question comes from Claudia Chambers. Uh, and one of the things that Carlotta mentioned was the importance of the observers. And Claudia asks, did the two observers look at the children at the same time? Or were they observing subsets within the same group? Uh, 
Right. Um, so, and maybe Emma can, can complete. Uh, but yeah, so the two observers were present at the same time and they were present all along the games from the pre uh, to the, from the pre exposure to the exposure to the um, post exposure. Uh, so, they did observe at the same time and we developed grid that allowed them to capture observations uh, during the, the, while the game was performed. Okay. What I can add, uh, to observe when 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 alone to make sure, like because sometimes we used to we used to work on uh, on us on school primary schools where other children they can come and disturb the children. So the father person used to go and just make sure that the 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 place is secure. The other ones used just to see if not, like the children is scoring. The, the score the, where the children are scoring in the box is the same like the, the, the all the responses are provided by 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 mouth so they look they use just to try and get to see if there is nothing is missing they were together in the loan and they make sure that they catch they they sit together they sympathize and they look at the differences and they ask why and they look commonalities and then they they look for the recommendation for the next phases so I guess building building off the work of the observers uh, and the challenges that they face in assessing a group, I was wondering, uh, and I know this is, is something on the minds of our listeners, did you consider assessing these children individually? Uh, and why was it that you decided to do it um, as, a, as a group? We decided to go to, to work as a group because the children, they are, they are familiar with strangers. They are not familiar with the other people more than their families because of they are living in the rural area. So most of them they, they didn't attend the schools. So if you 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 walk one by one, it's very hard. And even if you walk with them as a group, some of them they they used to cry and even refuse to respond. So we walked as a group so they cannot be afraid of us, so they can feel at easy, so they can respond, provide the responses freely. Uh, Working with, with them individually is very hard because they are afraid of different persons, different fa new faces. So that's why we decided just said I can work together as a team, which what just like they cannot copy 100% to each other because we work in the big spaces. We used to call one, they go on the, the, the left corner, the others they are sitting in the right one, so that we can ask the question, but they are, they are saying that they are still in the same row. Great, and Carlotta, I don't know if you have anything to add. Yeah, so I just wanted to add that the icebreaker that Emma explained in detail during the presentation was actually key in order to build uh, trust within the group of children. Uh, so this is something that we also understood that was needed. So you really make the children feeling part of a group before you expose them to the game so that they trust each other and they are used to stay with each other. Because yeah, assessing them individually might um, might like bring fears or mistrust um, and feeling that the, the child is uh, observed and um, and yeah, so it's definitely like very important that to bring them as a group and to build trust between the group before you play the game. Great, thank you, Carlotta. Thank you, Emma. We are actually at time for today. Uh, I want to thank today's uh, guests. Uh, you guys have been amazing. Thank you for persisting through your Wi-Fi issues. Um, we really appreciate learning more about this program uh, and the amazing work that you're doing. I'm sorry that we didn't get to answer everyone's question. Um, there were a ton today. and We had an audience of over 100 people. Um, but I want you to know that the recording of today's webinar alongside the slides are going to be posted on DME for Peace Media Gallery. Um, this afternoon. Um, so please return to this web uh, webinar, uh, continue the discussion in the comments, and we'll make sure that uh, Emma and Carlotta are able to uh, sort of continue the discussion with you. Um, as you can imagine, the webinars are about to come thick and fast with DME for Peace. We're going to be back next week, uh, January 24th, as we welcome Soledad Muniz of InsightShare and Josiah Mbai of uh, Pact to lead a discussion on use, using participatory video and most significant change to measure trauma healing and peace building outcomes. 
you should have an email uh, in your inbox regarding that webinar tomorrow. Um, but we hope to see you online then. Uh, have a great rest of your week, and I will talk to you guys soon.